Hey everybody, my name is Jeff Bull, Manager of Developer Advocacy. Uh, hi, I'm Asher, Director of Product Marketing here at Algosec. It's really great to have you here. Uh, uh, th thank you for having me. Absolutely. So we're wrapping up the week at Cisco Live. Today is our last day, but obviously that doesn't mean there's any lack of content or lack of uh, things to for people to be involved with. And we're here for in the sure. DevNet zone right now. There's lots of classes and stuff going on. It's um, amazing, by the way. I really enjoyed it. I even attended some of the classes. Excellent. Oh my yeah. gosh, it's fantastic. Yeah. It's it's. You know, the sessions are great, but some of the snacks after our afternoons have yeah. been really good. They've been making some homemade uh, stroop well, waffles out here. Those were amazing. <laughs> and the Kit Kat. Don't forget, oh, of course, Kit no. Kat uh, is always a good thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, one of the big themes this year, not and I shouldn't say just this year, but it's a big, big theme for Cisco right now is security. Yeah. And obviously the term security is a very big blanket term, so <laughs> we'll, we'll break it down a little bit. But I wanted to kind of lead us into a conversation about your company and the, the work that you all do and the products you put out there. Mm -hmm. you know, what I wanted to talk about is, since we're, we're in this area of, you know, since we're in DevNet, automation, telemetry, taking data and then be able to make contextual decisions based off of that, and then automate the things away that don't require a lot of creativity, to spend more time on the creative thinking to solve problems, it's really important for us. So I'd love to give, use that as, as an opportunity to say, you know, can you tell us a bit more about what AlgoSelf does, how it does it, and we can then kind of work with that to talk about you know, how that helps uh, security operators. Mm -hmm. So really what AlgoSelf does is secure application connectivity anywhere. Anywhere meaning both on the cloud, on-prem, in your SDN like ACI, VMware NSX. So we pretty much cover your entire network. And when we look at connectivity, we look at the business application context because this is what really gives you the value. So it's not about just running security for the sake of security, but what is the business context of those security changes? So when we talk with our customers, we found out there are three main things that are really worried when it comes to security and connectivity together. The first one is around the broken visibility that they have. So they are not sure why they are doing what they are doing because if you really think about it, Connectivity is here to serve their business application. So they need to know which business applications they have, and they need to know what are the network infrastructure, what are the network security infrastructure, to be more exact, that is uh, helping and, uh, those business applications to run. The second thing that we see is risk and compliance, risk and compliance, risk and compliance. So it's all over, to be honest. So, and you know, regulatory are just keeping up they have more and more regulation that you, a company, needs to uphold and it's become more a bottleneck to making those changes. And risk, this is uh, where you need to cover. Mm -hmm. yeah? the, the, this is the things that you need to do. And lastly, they get more and more requests from the business to make changes into their application connectivity, to roll out new applications that require new connectivity. And the fact that they are slowed down, this is an issue for them. So this is the customer perspective, and as you can imagine, we do exactly that. So <laughs> the first layer, what we give, is really visibility into both your business application, the connectivity they consume, and the security policy that runs it. So really you get the full picture between the business request and the infrastructure that support that request from a security perspective. Mm -hmm. The second thing that we are able to do is a full audit trail, a full compliance report, full risk metrics on where is your network at the moment and where are the places you need to watch out for. Of course, prioritize, of course, enrich with vulnerability information. So all of that under one roof, so you get a lot of information and it's prioritized so you're not uh, drowning in uh, different risks that you need to attend to. You know what you need to do. And lastly, we have our intelligent automation, and what it does is really, let's say that you don't want to alter an application connectivity because you have a new functionality that you want to roll out, or you have a homegrown application that you want to roll out to your users. So this is really about business agility. Agosec can automate with almost zero touch, it's up to you if you want or not, the entire process. First of all, by identifying what are the network security devices that are blocking or allowing the traffic that you want to have. Mm -hmm. Second, giving you risk metrics and compliance reporting so you will know exactly what will happen if you will open that connectivity and that it is aligned with the organization standard, Cisco-based practices, as well as the, the company's own zones and segmentation that they have in place. And last, 
we are even able to implement those changes on the devices. Now, something to know about AlgoSec is that while we are connecting with Cisco Meraki, we are connecting with Cisco ICE, we are connecting with Cisco Firepower, we are connecting with Cisco Secure Workload, mm -hmm. with Cisco IOS and uh, multiple uh, devices that are being provided by Cisco. Cisco ACI, for example, mm -hmm. both in application mode and in network mode. We are also a, a multi-vendor, we have a multi-vendor report. So you can connect with AlgoSec to Azure, AWS. You can connect with AlgoSec to your checkpoints or other vendors, security devices. And then you get an holistic view of all of that landscape. And when you need to make a change, you don't have to know each device how to make it because we take care of that for you. It's something I can really appreciate about all of the all the forms and features you just described, um, there's, there's plenty to appreciate. But one thing that specifically pulls out for me as a through line is, so often, whether they're a, you're a security operator working in a SOC, you're a network engineer, whatever your role is in IT, you know, so often we know the value as you know, a, a re, a, as a rehabilitating network engineer myself. <laughs> um, the, the, what we find difficult is we know what we do and we know why it's so valuable to the company, but so often we find that hard to translate to a business decision maker or someone else. That like, no, but the network engineering is super important, or like these security Completely. threat analysis are really you know, viable, because the business decision makers, while they might know that, yes, this is important, it's the sort of under the covers, we know that's what makes everything run, but I don't need to know how the gas gets into my, my range to cook my food, I just need to know that if I put food together in a bowl, food comes together, what happens below that, that's not something that's important. So I, I find it for the for that crowd, and I find it really interesting how the the use case that your your organization is approaching this is how can we translate all the data and this context that we have into a set of consumable information that a business decision maker can look at. And I think what that also does is for people that work in security operations or network operations, it actually makes them more valuable because now their work and what they do gets translated into something that's very meaningful for the audience they really want to translate it to. Uh, that, that's completely spot on, as you say. And what's amazing about that, that you know nobody gets a kudos for when everything is working, but now you do have the option and show SLAs and how the metrics of making a change, so there is a big furniture, furniture manufacturer mm -hmm. uh, in the Scandinavians who were able uh, to shorten the time from two weeks to four hours in making a business application connectivity change. Now the business of course appreciates it because it's a, mm -hmm. it, it's a walk in the park. It's very easy to see how you can get uh, faster, more secure. Mm -hmm. So you, you get it all, let's be honest. So, the partnership together with Cisco, together with other vendors, is amazing. But more, more than that, you know, there is a very big shift in the world. It's already happening mm -hmm. <laughs> for many years around DevOps. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, in some organizations, depending on their maturity, they have a DevOps practice. But really, when you look at DevOps, it's a behavioral change. So it's about the responsibility that you need to take from start to finish on the changes that you want to make, on the deployment that you want to do. And what you can do with AlgoSec is also take your DevOps tools, for example, Ansible or Puppet or Chef, check to see if the connectivity is already available. And I can tell you that uh, from what we see with customers, in most cases, meaning not most cases, 25, 23%, something like that, the connectivity already works. So people are waiting with no good reason. It already, it's already there, so they can check in Ansible. Mm -hmm. Is the connectivity allowed, yes or no? And if not, open up a ticket very quickly or swiftly. They can run it through the process. So everybody's happy. Mm -hmm. Both the organization who was able to take the DevOps methodology and implement it inside and include the connectivity, which is a very big part that many people forget. So now that you've mentioned DevOps, I'm gonna have to I, I have to ask because there's a big crowd here um, and always is at the DevNet zone that you know here's the the concept of like you know, DevOps, but in a more practical sense probably for them or in a more tactical sense for them is the idea of infrastructure as code where yeah. we're we're orchestrating and administering the orchestra the infrastructure that runs our businesses mm -hmm. with more of 
not necessarily just code, but like using more developer tools and methodologies to do that. And as we were talking in the pre-show a little bit, you mentioned that Algosec has a, has a way to help support that as well. Yeah, so we, we released a few months ago a new capability around IAC, the infrastructure as code. So as part of the pull request that you have in your DevOps, in your CICD pipeline, mm -hmm. we are already checking for the security issues that you might encounter. And this is happening inside Terraform, inside your tool of choice. So now, as a developer, you can decide. Instead of getting it at the end, the list from security people, oh, you can go to production, you first need to fix A, B, C, and D. Mm -hmm. At the pull request, at this, almost at the beginning, after development, this is the second phase, you are able to see all the risks that are associated to the change that you're going to do, in this case, in the cloud infrastructure. And you can, the organization can decide either they block it until they fix that issue, or they can continue and, and move on. So really, this gives the development not only the responsibility, but also the tools to fix the problems that uh, they will encounter. And because it happens early in the process, it costs less to do it. So you are even saving money along in the process. And you're, what you're really shining a light on to me is, I, I used the term through line previously, but I think what you're really shining a light on is the, the underpinning of all of this that you have described and others I've met with really comes down to, I think, the term observability. You're able to take observable information, wrap, take con contextual things that we know as people and what we know that this, these environments are supposed to be doing, put that together so real decisions can be made about what do we want to do next, how do we configure something. But, you know, we've here at Cisco Live, especially this year, full stack observability as a, as a, as a buzzword has been talked about. Yeah. But I think the word observability is really the, the key component of that because there's so much data that comes in and you're showing exactly how companies like Algoset can take data, observe it, create, put context around it, and make something really magical out, out of that. And, and by the way, we are going to release later this year uh, Algosec into the Nexus dashboard. Mm -hmm. So this is something that you are able uh, to consume as part of your observability. And now you have the full picture also for your network security. Might it be Cisco devices or other vendors? Right. So your Meraki, your firepower, titration, everything already packed in, in the same place. Fantastic. So I, I think it can be great for our joint customers yeah. uh, in, in that respect. Absolutely. It's been so nice having you here today. I really appreciate it. Uh, Thank before, you so much. Before we wrap up, is there anything that uh, uh, folks watching can go follow up on and do and kind of interact with your products? So I do invite you to come on to algosec.com, our website. You can read all about how can we assist you in your journey through DevOps, journey for migration to the cloud, compliance, or even automation that you are encountering today. How can you utilize your investment that you have already done with Cisco mm -hmm. and uh, get more out of it? Excellent. Thank you so much for being so here. So thank you so much, my friend. Really it was a pleasure. It. And for everybody watching, please go to developer.cisco.com slash Cisco Live to find all the information about the event and where you can get started on your infrastructure as code journey.